Hey there YouTube, Merrick Pye here. So this is a response to a video that Bergo78 liked. Um, I don't actually have in internet access when I'm recording this, so I don't know who the actual YouTube user is that made the video, but I'll put the uh, the proper credits in the, in the description for this one. But I saw on that video a game of Minesweeper within Minecraft, and the way that the player did it was he had a bed of redstone wire that when activated it would activate these pistons underneath the redstone wire that would pop up and display a number just like in uh, Minesweeper. The number represents how many bombs that are adjacent to this specific block or this specific plot of land. Uh, and you do that, you get different numbers, and then if you accidentally happen to press onto a space, space of the bomb, then the uh, then it would activate TNT and blow you up and end your game. And I thought it was a cool idea, but as I was doing research on this, I noticed that the main issue seemed to be that when you make these redstone, or these, not redstone, these uh, Minesweeper games within Minecraft, is you can only make a single layout of bombs. Um, so it, it doesn't really update, there's no way to change it unless you either go somewhere else in your world and make a new map at that point uh, then somebody can play it a number of times until they get bored of that and then need to go make another map uh, they do it that way or they just dig up the map that they're at at that moment and then again laboriously place every single block where it needs to be I know there's um, excuse me I know there's texture packs that uh, change the texture values for certain blocks so that they are uh, the numbers within the game Minesweeper, but still, it, those numbers don't automatically update based on the number of uh, bombs nearby, so it's it's not very, very good if you want to have a long-lasting Minesweeper game. So, I thought, well, what if there's a way to use redstone to do this? And this is what I came up with. I'm calling this, I'm going to call it a Minesweeper cell. Uh, it's probably more correct to call it a Minesweeper plot, but whatever. Um, so, how this works is this switch right down here tells whether this plot is going to be a bomb or not. So if I flip this switch, okay, we can see that it's doing something. And this one right here, if this is as if I clicked on this plot of land and dug it up to see whether there's a bomb or there's a number. So if I click on this, well it's a bomb and this is my bomb representation. Um, it's just this sort of cascade downward or whichever direction based on your orientation uh, but it's this repeating pattern says ooh you hit a bomb I'm sure there's you can make it different ways you can set this up to some sort of uh, segment display and make a B or whatever but I just didn't want to get too far into it so how okay I got the bomb placement how does that, it am I still gonna have to go and excuse me tell each different segment uh, the ones surrounding it, how many uh, bombs are adjacent to it, uh, no. And I'll show you how, why exactly in a second. So if you noticed, I have this switch connected to this weird little contraption here. And I believe I first saw this version of, this is a monostable circuit, and I believe I first saw this version on a video that Nico Bro posted. Uh, explaining his linear feedback shift register. I think that's the word. Again, no internet, so I can't verify. Um, but all this does is whenever I switch this, it sends a rising edge pulse that then dissipates or goes away after, uh, I guess, four, four tenths of a second because that's a full repeater. So this actually is the driving force behind the entire concept because when I press this this will be connected to each of the surrounding cells that then connects it to this counter. It's a very very simple 
counter. Um, all it is is R snarl latches with uh, odd looking AND gates, um, where which requires timing. Um, I'm not going to get too far into it. it. It's pretty darn simple. Every time I press a button, this R snarl latch goes, then this R snarl latch, and it just keeps on adding all the way up till you get to the very end. So representing eight different uh, bombs surrounding this plot. So how that works with the use of the monostable circuit, it doesn't really matter which ones I put in at what time. I don't have to go in any sort of order. Just say if I wanted five bombs in. Okay, I want this one, this one, this one, this one, it's four, and then this one. Okay. It was I put them in any order. Uh, these are supposed to represent the, the cells surrounding it. I could have made eight more of these, but I didn't really want to. Um, and this is just easier to show it working. So I put all five of those in, and if we look down on our counter, I have one, two, three, four, five uh, of these arsenal latches that are now activated, or now storing memory. So, if I come to here, and I try digging up this plot, okay, good, I did not hit a bomb, but this tells me that surrounding this cell, there are five different cells uh, adjacent to it in either the cardinal or the intermediate direction. So north, south, east, north, south, east, and west, or the diagonals, um, that have a bomb. And so fairly easy to see that if you connect these together, uh, it updates by itself. It updates the layout of the non-bomb cells by itself, so all you really have to worry about is the cells that are going to have the bomb. So, um, let's see, what else? I know there's a couple more things. Um, let's see, so say I, say I had placed a bunch of different bombs around here, but then I decide, you know, I want this bomb, or this plot to also be a bomb. Well, whenever I flip this switch, in addition to starting this clock and sending that pulse, it will remove the power from this torch right here, which then removes power here and turns all these torches on, which resets my RS nor latches. So I don't have to worry about the number of uh, bombs put into here. I it automatically resets. The only problem I can see would be if the player goes, oh, I want the bomb here. Oh wait, no, I don't want the bomb here. Well, then it's going to reset and it's going to totally screw you up. Uh, you also don't want to. You also don't want. You don't want to be wishy-washy about where you place your bombs. You just want to go. Okay, I want the bomb here, and not change because every time that you change, it's going to send a new pulse. So, um, I'm sure there's some improvements I can make. Uh, this, this is more of a diversion diversionary thing, something I wanted to just try to see if I could get working. I didn't think it was going to be that hard, and, and it didn't not it ended up not being that hard. I actually had this complete a couple days ago, but then uh, power flickered in my house and totally destroyed my world save, so I had to remake it, and I thought I would uh, might as well try to make it a little bit smaller than I had before. So, um, if anybody wants to try and make a complete game using this uh, Minecraft Minesweeper cell. Uh, the, I'm more than happy to release this. I'm going to have this on my media fire. Um, I'm going to have the world save of this on my media fire account and go ahead and go at it. Uh, thanks for watching. Keep subscribing. Keep friending. Keep telling your buds. I'm pretty darn close to 50. Uh, I might have even passed 50, but again, like I was saying, I don't have internet access. So if I have, then expect a uh, totally. <sighs> what am I, what's the word I'm trying to say? A totally self-centered uh, video posted uh, in a few days. Thanks.